Hey, how y'all doing today? This is Andrew, and today we're going to be taking some time to create a simple pointer that'll work on both physical objects within your scene using colliders and simple button clicks on canvas objects. And if you've been following some of my other videos, you may already know that I've created a event system for canvas objects already. So you may be thinking, Andrew, why do we need this pointer? Well, for one, this is a lot simpler and it'll get you up and running a lot quicker. But if you want to use physical objects within your scene, such as spheres or buttons or meshes that you custom create, this system will work for being able to do in and out as well as click events on those. And it will be a much easier process than my previous video for creating an Oculus Go pointer, which this basically will replace as well. And there's going to be a project template in the description so you can get started. And once you open it up, you'll get something that looks like this. And we have a pretty simple scene. We have a canvas, a button prefab that I've already created, an event system, as well as a directional light, where we're not going to worry about that. But if we go over to the simple pointer folder, we have a materials folder. We have some prefabs for our button, a canvas pointer, a physics pointer, as well as just a generic pointer. And I'll explain that in just a second. But then we also have scripts for each of those pointers, a custom script for testing out our pointer events, as well as a script that we're going to be using to take our VR input and put it into Unity's event system. And that's how all this is working. If we click on the event system object within the scene, this is practically Unity's standard event system as well as its standalone input module. And what we're going to be doing is attaching this VR input module onto the event system. And this is going to override the basic mouse clicks that are already being used for the standard input module or the standalone input module with that of whatever VR package you're going to be using. And in my example, I'm going to be using the Oculus package. You can use Steam VR as well. The only difference is going to be the calls to the input you're going to need. And in this video, we'll be filling out the VR input script as well as the pointer script. But before we do that, let's take a closer look at the functionality that's going to be running all of this. In Unity's documentation for the event system, there's a section for raycasters. And these are different raycasters that we can use for either a graphic raycaster, which is what you're most likely familiar with when we want to click on canvas objects in a more traditional game. But there are also raycasters that people really don't use a whole lot. There are 2D physics raycasters as well as normal physics raycasters. And for clicking on our 3D objects, we're going to be using a physics raycaster. And this physics raycaster is going to let us raycast against 3D objects within the scene and allows messages to be sent to 3D physics objects that implement event interfaces. And these are the same event interfaces that we use for canvas buttons, drop downs, sliders, all that good stuff. So with just a few lines of code, we're going to be able to get in, out, down, up, as well as click events on 3D objects. And that all sounds pretty good, but you may also be wondering, well, Andrew, why are you only showing us this now? Well, I only figured it out now, and I'll show you what I found out in just a second. All right, and if you remember, in the scene, we have that event system, and on that, we have the standalone input module. That inherits from this base input module. And if we scroll down here, we see that it has two base input variables. We have one for our default input, which is going to be handling the mouse clicks, but it also has an input override where you can replace those mouse clicks to say if you wanted to click using the space bar or the arrow keys or something weird like that, you can do that. But for us in our case, we're going to be replacing that input with input from our controller. And I came across this when I was updating my custom input module for my other series. And I decided to test it out and it worked pretty well. All right, and I think that goes over all the basics. Let's go back into Unity so we can get started. All right, so now that we're back in Unity, let's start on the physics raycaster. We'll handle the canvas one in the next video. So we'll disable the canvas for right now. And then I'll also bring in the camera rig prefab. We'll go to its transform, make sure it's all zeroed out. That looks good. We'll collapse that and we'll open up our VR input script as well as our physics pointer. And once you open up the VR input script, you'll get something that looks like this, where I've already written out the overriding functions for the base input, where we're going to be overriding the get mouse button, the button down, up, as well as the position. But first, we're going to need some variables here. The big thing about Unity's event system that it revolves around having an event camera and knowing where the cursor is on the screen. Obviously, since we're in VR, we don't have a cursor that we can use. But instead, what we'll be doing is having a dummy camera that's attached to the hand that we'll be using instead. And our cursor position is just going to be in the middle of that camera. So the first thing we'll need is a reference to what we'll call an event camera.
And whether you're using OVR or SteamVR, that's the only variable that you're going to need for both of these. At this point, you'll want to put in whatever variables you're going to need for your input. And like I said, since I'm using OVR, I'm going to do that now. And I'm going to need one for whatever button I want to use as well as a controller. If you're using SteamVR, you'll obviously need an action as well as whatever button you want to use. But I'll have an OVR input button. I'm going to call mine click button. And I'll initialize it to OVR input dot button. And I'm just going to use the primary index trigger. And then I would like to designate what controller I want it to be checking for. So I'll write controller, controller, and I'm going to initialize it to all. But in the inspector, I'm going to set it to the right one. All right, so we have that. And if you remember, I showed you that this component is attached to the event system. So what we're going to want to do is get the base input module. And that's going to be that script that I showed you earlier. But in this case, since our standalone input module inherits from it, that's essentially the component we're going to be getting. And we'll want to access that input override and we'll be sending it to this. And we can do that because the script inherits from base input. All right. And now that we have that, let's go down to our get mouse button. And this is just going to get the value of whatever click button you have. So I'll just put over your input, get click button, and then my controller. And if you're using Steam VR, you'll just want to put the action here and get its current value. And then we'll go down to get mouse button down. It's going to be pretty similar. Well, I'll just write get down. And we'll say put in our click button and our controller. And then I'll just copy this because I don't want to write all that out again. And we'll just write get up. All right, cool. And then we just have our mouse position here where, like I said before, we're just going to use the center. And we need that event camera because we need to get the pixel width and the pixel height of it to make sure that we're recasting out of the center of it. So we'll be re returning a new vector too. It's going to be our event camera. And we want to use the pixel width. We'll divide that by two. And then we want to get our event camera again, the pixel height, not the pixel width again. And we'll divide that by two as well. And that'll give us a point in the center of our event camera. And that's pretty much it for the input. A lot of the code we're going to be writing is going to be for the physics pointer, where I previously had it with a pointer base class that both the physics pointer and the canvas pointer inherited from. Overall, the code is being reused for both of those, but it's just a little bit too complex for what we needed to do for this video. So instead of having it inherit from pointer, we're just going to ignore that for now. And we'll just have it inherit from model behavior. And the first thing that we're going to do is have a default length for our pointer. This is primarily going to be handling the visual element. So it's going to have a line render, it's going to ray cast out, and it's going to be looking for physics objects, and it's going to set the default length of that line render that we have, or it's going to set it based on if we're hitting something. So this doesn't really handle any actual interactions, it just shows the player, hey, this is what you're currently pointed at. And so we'll start off by having a public float that's going to be the default length. And this is just going to show how long we want the line render to be because obviously you want to not have it too far and then it's just shooting out into the entire scene and that just looks kind of silly and then we'll want a reference to a line renderer i didn't go over the prefabs too much at the beginning of the video but once we set it up in engine we'll take a better look at it and we'll need a private void awake and we'll need one for our update as well and i think i'll just write out all the signatures right now for our functions. So we'll have an update. We'll have a private function that's going to return a vector three that we'll call calculate end. We'll have another one for creating the forward raycast from our controller and it'll be returning a raycast hit. We'll call that create forward raycast. And then we'll have another one for calculating our default end. I think I'll probably name this one better, but we'll just call it default end, where we're going to be passing in a length. And there we go. And then we'll just work down. And we'll ignore all those functions currently screaming as. We'll fix them in a second. So the first thing that we want to do is get our line renderer. I'm sure you most likely already knew that. 
and then we'll go down to update where all we're going to be doing is calling update update length which I actually forgot to write that function I don't even know how the world I managed to do that so we'll need another function under it that we'll call update length and hopefully I name it right I oh, got it and we're going to want to access our line renderer and when we're using a line render we need to set two positions on it we want to set you know where it's coming from and where it's going and so we'll write set position and we have to give it an index and the index of zero is going to be where it starts from where we want it to start from our hand and this physics pointer is going to be childed to our hand so we can just use the transform position of the pointer itself and then we want to set the position of the end and that's where we're going to be calling calculate end and then we'll go down to our calculate end function where we're going to want to store raycast hit and that's going to be started from our create forward raycast and we'll scroll down here there we go and then we'll want a vector 3 for storing our end position and that's where we'll be calling our default end and passing in our default length and once I write all this out we'll step through it a little bit more so don't worry and if we hit a collider we'll update our end position to our hit point and then we'll just want to return our end position and the basic logic for this function is hey let's create a forward raycast from our controller which is going to call this function and if we hit something it's going to store whatever we hit in this raycast hit we're going to also get an end position and it's going to start with the value from our default end using our default length and that's going to be the default value and if we hit something we want to update that in position using the point of that raycast hit and then we just want to return our final value and that's pretty simple and then obviously within our create forward raycast we're going to be creating a raycast that's going to be going in the forward direction of our hand and we'll start out by creating a raycast hit variable that we'll call hit and this will what we'll be returning at the very end and then we'll be creating a new ray where it's going to be originating from the location of our hand and we're going to just do transform.forward pretty simple and then we actually want to call that physics raycast where we'll use our ray we'll use the out keyword so we'll be getting whatever data that we're getting from this raycast and storing it in our hit and then we want to just pass in our default length And that's it for that. And then we want to calculate the default end of our raycast. Just in case, if we're not hitting anything, we just want to say, hey, this is how far we want you to go. And we'll just write return. We want it to start at the position of our hand. And then we'll add on to that. We'll use the transform.forward. And we'll multiply it by the length that we're passing in. And it's going to be that default length. All right, so we'll scroll back up so we can look at update here. So every frame we're going to be calling update length and update length we're going to say hey line renderer you're going to be set to this position to start and then for your end let's see actually where that's going to be let's go to calculate end we'll say hey let's forward raycast out from the controller to see if we can hit anything within our default range and just to simplify things let's also calculate the default end in case we don't hit anything you can do this in an if else statement but for readability sake for right now I just have it starting off as the default end. But if we hit something, let's replace that end position with the hit point, and then let's return that position. But when we're creating that forward raycast for that raycast hit, we create a new hit variable. We're going to create a new ray that's going to start at our controller. It's going to go forward out from it, and then we'll give our raycast here, the ray, our little hit variable to store the information and how far we want it to go. And then we're going to return any hit information. And then that default end, it's going to calculate the default end of our line renderer and it's going to start at the position of our hand and then we're going to be adding onto that vector the forward vector of it and we're going to be multiplying that forward by the length all right and that's pretty much it and this is going to give us that visual component so let's go back into unity so we can look at the prefab a little bit more closely all right and here we are in unity so let's click on our physics pointer here and if you remember earlier when we were setting up our vr input script we're going to need a camera to essentially raycast out of the center of 
where we have a camera already here, it's disabled, and we're making sure that it's not gonna actually be rendering anything. We then have a physics raycaster, which is that piece of documentation I showed you earlier, and then our line renderer, and then that physics pointer script that we just put together. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to my camera rig, I'm gonna unpack this, so none of my changes go to the original prefab. We get our physics pointer, we'll click and drag that onto there, and then we'll want to go to our event system, and we want to drag our physics pointer into our event camera, so it gets that camera that I just showed you. And then our click button is already set to the right value, but for the controller, I just want it to be on the right touch controller. And for this button prefab, I already have a simple pointer event script that I've created, so it'll change color when we go through each of the pointer events, as well as an extra sort of on-click event to show you an example of how that would work. And I guess it would be helpful to look at this script, so before we test it, let's look at this. All right, and here we are within that pointer event script where we have all of these interfaces that we're using. And if you remember, when we were looking at that event system for the physics, it's using all of those event system pieces of functionality. So we have our enter, our exit, our down, our up, as well as our click. And then based on each of those functions, or those interfaces, we have access to the functions for on pointer enter, exit, down, and all that good stuff. So we're gonna be changing the color and I'll also be printing out the basic actions within the console. And I think that about does it. Let's go back into Unity. I'm gonna set up my headset and we'll see. Well, well hopefully this works. All right, now that we're back in Unity, let's hit play. All right, and it seems to be working pretty well. We're getting all of our events and we're getting all the good color feedback on our 3D object. And I think that about does it for this video. In the next one, we'll be working out the pointer for the canvas, as well as doing some really basic scene setup for getting that working. So hopefully you stick around to see that. If you have any problems or any questions, feel free to leave them below. And if you'd like to support my work, feel free to check out my Patreon or stop by the Discord and say hello. But that's all for now. I'll see you in the next one.